Dr. Ben Bickman, sprouting and adding apple cider vinegar can help make grains much more healthy with Carly Wendell and others presented in the IQ Metabolic Classroom. I generally consider oats to be better than wheat. I know there's a lower um, glucose response and insulin response to oats versus wheat. Of course, oats will have little or no gluten. And I like that. That's nice to those who are sensitive to it. Um, and I would actually put, well, it depends when it comes to the pure starch and insulin effect, I would put insulin uh, rice as one of the biggest offenders, actually, even worse than wheat, potentially, especially some of the more sticky rice that is almost 100% starch. There's almost this, essentially nothing else in it. Uh, so, but, but of course it would depend on the rice. Um, uh, and you know, a more kind of whole grain brown rice would have a little likely more, maybe more comparable starch level to what you see. Um, but a different starch, but what you see compared to wheat. And I would say I kind of am starting to wonder if it's not so much the, the grain that's the issue, but it's the way we're farming it. Um, a lot of these modern grains, um, one is called Springfield wheat that, you know, we have over a million acres in the United States growing this grain. It's owned by a chemical company. A chemical company produces this wheat um, because they have a, they have morphed it and changed it so that you can spray a chemical somewhat like glyphosate on the crop and, um, you know, kill all the weeds so that you'll get a, a higher yield in your harvest. And what is that doing to us? What is ingesting those um, chemicals doing to our gut lining? You know, your gut lining is much more um, susceptible to taking in those chemicals than say like your skin if you were outside spraying it. So I kind of feel like that's the issue. And some of these, if you look for an ancient grain or an, uh, an heirloom grain, those are ones that haven't been hybridized and changed and made so that you can spray chemicals on it, like kamut and einkorn and stuff. Yeah. I, I don't think quinoa has any gluten, um, which would be a positive for those who are worried. It, it, I, I know from my own tests, it has much less of a glucose response when I'm with when I'm wearing my CGM. Um, so I think uh, quinoa is probably one that uh, could be used a little more liberally or, or looked at as a grain of choice if you're going to use any. So I would certainly put it over wheat. Mm -hmm. I had an uncle who was overweight and sick, and he started sprouting ancient grains, ancient wheat. Um, and making himself these waffles with it. And that's basically all he ate. And the change in his body was remarkable. Wow. I know that when you sprout things, the available proteins and nutrients are higher. You, you absorb more. Um, it's more useful. So I think that's probably a much better way to eat hmm. grains is to sprout them. Starch is a huge class of, well, not that huge, but it's a big class of, of food. And that involves undigestible starches like fibers and then it includes digestible starches um, like just starch like what just turns into glucose immediately uh, so, so psyllium husk is a soluble fiber and so that is a fiber that we don't digest our enzymes our kind of human made enzymes can't digest it so that's what makes it a fiber but the bacteria can digest it in our large intestine and so it's it's considered a prebiotic fiber soluble fiber that's in contrast to insoluble fiber, um, which is not digestible by anything and just sort of scrapes its way down the intestines, providing just bulk. The studies that have been done looking at, um, looking at apple cider vinegar in particular, uh, they, they were looking at uh, meals that involved wheat. Uh, so, so wheat was the primary starch in these. In these. And this, this was studies, uh, I think, in type 2 diabetics. But yeah, it, it, apple cider vinegar, I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to blunt the glycemic and insulin response to virtually every starch, whether it be rice or wheat. I can't imagine it would make any difference. Isn't cereal, oatmeal, bread, pancakes, waffles, muffins, bagels, just about everything, just a different form of the same thing metabolically? Yep. <laughs> yep, I think it is, right? <laughs> yep, it is. Yeah. They're all delicious. Which grains are better to avoid insulin response? Oats have lower insulin response than wheat and have little or no gluten. Rice, especially sticky rice, is worse than wheat due to its excess starch. 
However, whole grain brown rice would be about the same as wheat. Carly, it may also be the way that we are farming grains. For example, Springfield wheat with over 1 million acres in the U.S. is owned by a chemical company. They get higher yield by spraying glyphosate type desiccant directly onto the wheat. But what is that doing to our gut lining? She suggests eating ancient grains. Quinoa has no gluten and is much lower in its insulin response. It's recommended over wheat by Dr. Bickman. Carly tells a story about her uncle who was overweight and sick. So he switched to eating simply sprouted ancient grains and made waffles every day, and he had great results. She says that sprouted grains have higher and more useful protein and nutrients. Dr. Bickman, starch is a large class of food. There are undigestible starches, which are fibers, and there are digestible starches, which immediately turn into glucose. Psyllium husk is an example of a soluble fiber. Our human enzymes cannot digest it, but our gut bacteria can, so it is considered a probiotic soluble fiber. Insoluble fiber is not digestible at all. Apple cider vinegar studies have shown that with type 2 diabetics eating wheat, they have great results. Apple cider vinegar will blunt the glucose and insulin response to any starch. Ben is asked, aren't cereals, oatmeal, bread, pancakes, waffles, muffins, bagels just about all the same? Dr. Bickman answers, yes, they are all delicious, however. Annotated, summarized, easy to share with loved ones.